I'm Richard Hooper and this is Sat TV. Now I'm pleased to be joined by Jack Walters, CEO of Ziplink. Thanks for joining me today, Jack. Thanks, Richard. Great to see you again and uh, hello to the audience. With all the excitement and new satellite constellations in the SATCOM market, how does this affect Ziplink? Well, there's a lot of changes, especially on the LEO side, as I'm sure you've all read about, and uh, it does affect Ziplink. Uh, we are primarily known as a TCP acceleration vendor, although we do quite a bit more. And uh, uh, the LEO constellations don't necessarily need TCP acceleration, but they do need some other tools we have in our package. And uh, some of those tools include uh, things like Fast Start, which generates about 30% better response time for the user and overcomes uh, some of the packet loss on, say, Starlink and other LEO constellations. Uh, that's a big change. Uh, the, second, the second big change is everything is software defined now, Richard. So uh, what used to be to find a device, to find uh, a link, is now an integrated software uh, definition. And, and uh, we've incorporated that within the ZipLink uh, architecture. So you can now soft define a, a router, you can soft define an accelerator and a WAN optimization system. So uh, those are very important. And so we have our own software defined networking uh, capability. And then, but we also package our products into pieces and provide other people's uh, architectures pieces of say TCP accelerators or other WAN optimization features. So those those are the big changes. Uh, the last thing and most important thing is the LEOs have driven a kind of a new business called uh, hybrid networking, where you may want to interconnect LEOs, geos, cellular data, and other kinds of connections. And uh, Ziplink is a big player in that marketplace. We do interconnect all those orbital styles and apply the proper optimizations for each one. Now, you mentioned software defined. Uh, that was going to be sort of my next question. There is considerable attention to the ground equipment and software defined networking these days. Um, talk a little bit more how Ziplink plays in this sector. Many of you have heard about uh, what, what's called orchestration, software orchestration. And basically that means uh, you take the uh, equipment necessary to make uh, a service like routers, switches and so forth. Uh, you take the uh, satellite connection or the WAN connection and you define in a software way in an orchestrator uh, a connection. And then you can use it over and over again so it applies much more quickly and it's centralized so it avoids uh, making mistakes on data entry. And so uh, ZipLink over the last, say, six years started with building a virtual network function. So all the functions within ZipLink had been virtualized. And then a few years ago, along came these orchestration systems. We built one into our system uh, to make deployment much easier. And then we also work with third-party vendors that want to orchestrate ZipLink in. And so uh, a company like Kratos, I'll just use an example, uh, they might build a uh, software orchestration system and uh, ZipLink might be a plug-in into something like that. And, and therefore you'd get the benefits of the uh, ZipLink optimization along with all their other functions. So you could uh, get a total system from ZipLink or you could get a partial system from ZipLink. Now, in terms of vertical markets, which segments does ZipLink have the most penetration? That's a very interesting question because it changes uh, frequently on us. And uh, last two years, the government sector has been the largest sector for ZipLink. And, and the reason is, uh, for a few reasons. One is uh, there's a higher spending in defense these days, as you may know from all the different countries. Uh, secondly, satellite is a big part of those defense budgets. And so what they're looking for from ZipLink in, in those networks, and the reason we've uh, increased our sales in that sector, is they're looking for much higher speeds. So what used to be a SATCOM connection at 20 megabits or 30 megabits is now hundreds of megabits or gigabits. And ZipLink has always been able to scale up high to those data rates. So they like that about us. We have some good redundancy capability built in. So government networks, especially DOD networks, are nonstop. And therefore, they can't go down. And so uh, ZipLink has logic in our system to quickly switch between orbits or switch between devices uh, so that the uh, TCP session never ends. And, and that's something called session persistence. So government has been... Uh, very big. Uh, the second largest market for us is maritime. That used to be the largest market. 
Uh, we have roughly uh, six of the largest seven cruise lines using ZipLink, and it's kind of for the same reason. Uh, you may have read all the articles about cruise lines moving from tens of megabits to gigabits, and, and ZipLink was a big part of that, and, and they were able to uh, bond, for instance, several different satellite connections together in a bonded arrangement to get to those data rates. So uh, we, we have that technology. It's operating well. Um, and But of course, from a business perspective, the cruise line industry has uh, gone down a bit, right, during COVID and the post-COVID shakedown. So uh, that's not as large as it used to be. And I think it will be large again, very large in the ferry sector of, uh, of the uh, maritime business. So maritime is still very good for us. Uh, we have two other big sectors. Uh, one is cell backhaul, and that is uh, placing a base station anywhere on the planet and backhauling the connection. And, and that's a very good part of our business. Uh, trunking, which, which is defined as 100 megabits or higher trunks to ISPs and large enterprises. And, and uh, that's, that's a good business. And lastly, enterprise itself, especially uh, oil and gas and uh, banking have been very good for us. What are some of the bigger challenges ZipLink faces moving forward? Probably the biggest challenge we have is probably a challenge maybe you guys have or anyone listening to this call, and that is recruiting. I think uh, for a software development company, recruiting software developers and testers is uh, one of the harder things because we look for experience. And, uh, and we're based in Montreal in terms of our uh, R&D anyhow. And uh, it's a very difficult market, competitive market to recruit for talent. So that's probably one of the biggest challenges. Uh, the second biggest challenge is uh, getting the attention of the marketplace for all the hybrid networking we're doing now. We're, we're known as a uh, TCP acceleration vendor and a WAN optimization vendor. We've done a good job in that market. Uh, now we've entered the hybrid interconnection market with really good technology to interconnect multi-orbits and different kinds of connectivity. And, and I, the market doesn't look at us that way yet, right? So uh, I think the second biggest challenge for us is to, uh, you know, enter the marketing fray a little bit more aggressively and outline all the things that ZipLink is doing today beyond uh, what we've done over the last few years. Can you describe some of the recent wins and why ZipLink was selected? We've had a really good year, actually, that we had a down year in COVID, and then we've had two successive uh, increases in revenues and uh, profitability. Uh, kind of the three of three of the networks I might mention uh, would be with our partner Altasat in the United States. We uh, won a large Department of Defense deal to improve the user experience at about 130 sites for one of the agencies, and and they uh, improved throughput by uh, 40, 50 percent, and user responsiveness. So users are now very, very happy versus. Uh, a non-accelerated environment, and uh, and so that was that was a big win for us in the last year in the government sector. We just won a very large multi-million dollar deal in Asia. I can't announce who it is yet, but uh, that's also in the government sector, and and it's for the non-stop hybrid networking as well. And and thirdly, uh, Telenor Satellite, who I'm sure you know, uh, has endorsed our product in their anchor services, A-N-K-E-R services, which is a hybrid network. It uh, uses satellite, terrestrial wireless, and cellular data to the ferries for nonstop service and for end user hotspot access. So uh, that, that was a big win and, and they continue to be a great account for us. Well, Jack, thank you very much for that update. We look forward to talking to you again soon. We'll see you soon. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.